have you made any changes to like client facing interactions? Like I know that you had mentioned, you know, in your, your post or whatever about the consultation calls and like making sure that you guys are a good fit in and talking on the phone and how much that as a bride helped to like ease your concerns about working with that person. Have you made any other types of changes along those lines? Yeah. So when I, so I've been doing consult calls for, I want to say a little over two years now, and I've always loved them. I'm a big extrovert. And my mom always told me growing up, if you're going to have important conversations, have them face to face or over the phone. And I felt like talking to one of your potential wedding vendors, someone who's going to be doing your makeup on your face for your wedding day is Mm -hmm. a really important conversation to have. And so after I got engaged, I was like, okay, I got to do, like, I have to only do phone consults when people inquire. And I thought that was like the best thing. I thought that made me stand out from the crowd because I'm taking time to physically talk to my clients, whether it be over Zoom or on the phone. But as time went on, and again, this was after I got engaged too, even with vendors I was inquiring with for my own wedding, I was like, I don't have the time for these or like the time that we were available. It just wouldn't have worked with their schedule kind of thing. And also a lot of the phone calls, because it would be the first interaction with these vendors, it would feel very salesy. They would talk about their services, why you should be hiring me for your you know, videographer, whoever it is. And this is what makes me stand out kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, I kind of heard all this on your website when I read it and like I booked this call with you kind of thing. I have my own questions to ask kind of thing. So after that, now I just, again, send one email and it has the price. It has it all itemized, everything like that. But it also includes some information that I have listed on my website. Like this is what you can expect from me. This is a couple of additions that come along with hiring me. If you have any specific questions, if you want to hop on a phone call, just let me know. I'm always down to have a phone call with my clients because if they have specific things they want to ask or have uh-huh. clarification on, I want it to be over the phone. If they, I want to extend that to them because I also have clients who, you know, are nurses or they're lawyers, so they don't have time during the day to have these phone calls. Like I would have clients literally leaving work, and they're like, "Hey, sorry, I just got off of work. I'm in the fo- I'm on, I'm in the car kind of thing." Um, so it's like it it made it awkward requiring it because, you know, I don't have the same set schedule as my clients do. And I didn't want to sound salesy the first interaction we have one-on-one again over the phone or over Zoom. So having the email first and then offering a phone call follow-up if they wish to have one was the easiest transition that I did. Any other changes that you made to your business since becoming a bride-to-be? Uh, but the last one that I did change that I can remember is extending the proposal time. So whenever okay. I sent the proposal of services, at first it was like, I think I only gave like two or three days for people to sign and pay, uh, but now I extended it to a week. And yeah. the reason is, is because again, we're very fortunate to have family that is helping financially with the wedding. And because you have that third party involved now, you have three schedules to to worry about. And, you know, if I send this proposal there and if their mom is helping with the wedding, her mom might have to transfer money into the account or might have to wait for the paycheck come to come on Friday kind of thing. So uh-huh. That's why I extended that because I know people have different schedules. They also might have a lawyer that they want to have look over the contract or their planner, make sure everything is, you know, everything's good. So that's another thing that I changed too. I hear a lot of people complain. They'll be like, oh, you know, like if I found somebody that I really loved, I wouldn't want to risk them, you know, booking somebody else. I would get back to them right away. And I think that a lot of times we forget that like, yeah, but they still have work. They still have a life. You know, they still have, like you said, if somebody else is is paying, then they have multiple schedules or if they want to send it to their wedding planner and they just want to like, it's a big financial commitment mm-hmm. to book a vendor for a wedding and people really need to sometimes sit with that decision. And I think trying to push people to hurry up and get back to you right away can feel like, you know, like when you go to buy a car and you're sitting there in the sales room and they're like, just a second, let me go talk to my manager real quick. And you're like, you're probably going to go pee. Like you're going to, you know, you're going to get yourself a cup of coffee. You're not talking to your manager. It's a sales tactic to like add urgency and, you know, and you're just sitting there and you're at the point where you're like, I've been here for six hours 
Um, I just want to buy my fucking car and go home. I'm done with this. So you're willing to kind of just accept anything and just be like, okay, let's just get this over and let's get this done with this. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that like, sometimes we need to remember that urgency is good because we want them to get it done quickly so that we're not holding on to a date. And then we get other inquiries. Like, we know that we're getting all these other inquiries and stuff like yeah. that. And it's, it's juggling and it's managing that for ourselves. But at the same time, it's like, that doesn't matter to brides. Like right. they, they still have to make their decision when they feel good about it. And if people are excited about working with you, that's going to be the motivation. We don't need to like, we don't need to push too much urgency on people, like let people do it when, when they're ready. And if they're not ready, then move it along. Like we need to have our system and our process in place where it's like, okay, it feels good to everybody. And if it didn't feel good in the moment, then we're not sitting there being like, oh my God, we missed out. I'm a big empath and I try to put myself in other people's shoes. And Mm -hmm. if, and we all know as vendors, if we can help our clients do their, I say, job as uh-huh. the bride or whatever, it's going to make our job a whole lot easier. It's a domino effect. It's a two-way street. So if we can make the client's life easier, it's going to make our job a whole lot easier. And something that I've even implemented too, as far as like the inquiry process and the, you know, extending everything. One I have um, in my inquiry form at the very, the last question is, it, I can remember, the exact words, but essentially it goes along the lines of how far along in the process are you in booking your makeup artist? How quickly are you wanting to? And I have three options. It's, I want to book as soon as possible. Uh I am still looking at my options, weighing everything. I'll need a couple of weeks. And I just started my search. I'm going to need plenty of time. So one that gives me enough information to know, okay, if this person is still weighing their options, I'm not going to follow up in three to five days. I'm going to follow up in a week because they exactly. still are, you know, they're still inquiring. They're still getting quotes from people, you know, uh-huh. it may not be the same day. It could be, they might get a quote in five days. So they still have to weigh their options. And then two, I sometimes also like to ask, when would you like for me to reach out and follow up I love based that. on your schedule? Because yeah. again, I have nurses and I have lawyers and I have clients who are moms and, you know, they have to pick their kids up from daycare and they have to, you know, feed their families. So they may not have time to answer your email two days after you send it, you know what I mean? So also putting that in the client's shoes and putting the ball in their court, essentially, when would you like me to follow up? I'll put a reminder on my calendar. Mm -hmm. Hey, just following up, just circling back to your inquiry on the day that you asked, how is everything going? What can I help with kind of thing? Absolutely. Making it, making the client's life easier. It's going to give you a leg up because that shows that you care about them as a person, not just someone who's going to pay for your services. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have like a, like a email template kind of thing that I, it's one of the resources that I have in my coaching business and stuff like that. And one of the things that I have in there is put on your inquiry form, ask them where in the process they are, and then tailor your first response based on that. Like if there's somebody who's just starting out, what information do they need to know at the beginning of their search? Put yes. that information, highlight that in your first email, um, yeah. you know, and then like you said, it lets you know, like, don't be following up right away because they're still searching. They've got a ton of responses that are coming into their inbox right now. They're still sorting through all of those kinds of things. So I think you're right on the money there with asking that question. Uh, it's so important to understand what is their thought process right now? How motivated are they right now? What else are they juggling in their wedding planning process right now? How can I make their life easier? What obstacles can I remove to help right. facilitate the flow of their client journey from inquiry to booked? You know, what what obstacles can I remove? What information do they need at this point? Because people need different pieces of information at different points in their their buying process. If I'm walking past a store and I see a sign saying that they have a sale, okay, that's going to get me in the door. Mm-hmm. But now once I'm in the store, all right, what am I looking for? Some people are going to be looking for different things. So we kind of can keep that in mind with our email communication. Like what do people need to know at this point? How can I make this easier on them? 
because then it makes it easier on us because we're not having to do so many follow-ups. We're not having to answer so many questions. And the client feels like, oh my God, it's like she read my mind. She knew yeah. what I needed. She gave it to me. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's exactly. what really, I think, shows that somebody is a professional and mm-hmm. not just they're really good at doing makeup. You know, like, cause a lot of people are like, oh, I'm really good at doing makeup. I'm going to do this and I'm going to be a, a professional. It's like, there's another piece of the puzzle there. Like we, it's 10% 10% makeup, part. business and communications and, you know, something else too, that I changed as well, that made me think about this is uh-huh. um, when I send the proposal, I always make sure to like, look at the total. I'm like, okay, I feel like I need to add like a, in a way, like a payment plan for this. Uh-huh. So instead of 50% of this much, cause I do 50% down uh, for my retainer. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes I'm like, okay, that's a lot of money. Like that looks like one whole paycheck is makeup is not cheap anymore. Like no, the makeup really prices not. for weddings right now, it's, you're not going to find 2015 prices today. So I know how much makeup costs and I know it can be expensive. So I'm like, okay, let me see again. How can I make the client's life easier? Let's mm-hmm. do a payment plan. You can pay this much now, this much six or eight months before the wedding, depending on how close we are. And then this much the month before that way, you don't have to put an entire paycheck down in one day to secure a makeup artist or, you know, whatever vendor it is. So having a payment plan too also helps ease that sticker shock of, oh God, okay. I have to put that much money down. Yeah. Okay, great. So now I could do a payment plan and have increments do throughout the process. And that way you can also do follow-ups. Hey, how are we doing? I know your final or your next payment is coming up. Is there anything else I can help with? Is there anything that's been updated that we need to add on or anything like that while we're here? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. There's another artist that I've talked to who does a payment plan system like that, but I think she breaks Mm -hmm. it up into like 12 payments. So it's like, Oh, wow. monthly payments or or whatever if they are, they booked out a year in advance and then mm-hmm. she says that she puts like all of her brides on that payment plan and so every single month she guarantees that she knows how much income she has coming in that month based on like what's already been booked and I was like oh, that's a really fabulous that concept smart. that's really because interesting months, like especially in the slow season I'm like am I going to be able to pay the mortgage this month like there have been months where I'm like babe I'm not I'm not making anything like, and then I'll have a month in the next month. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, where did all this come from? Kind of thing. So I, that, uh, the instability that would definitely, the payment plan has definitely helped instability in like the slow months because Uh okay, cool, their wedding is in six months, their six month payment is coming up and it's January. So I know I'll have some cash this month. Yeah. Like I like to, to educate people to have not necessarily like payment plans like that, but to like, figure out like when is slow time can we get more retainers during slow time and it's like we're not doing the weddings and like how can we like take a look at our busy season and our slow time what can we work on in, in different times of our business to still be like okay um now that it's slow time i'm getting some retainers but maybe i can like have a bunch of my trials come in during like January, February, March for everybody that's going to happen in like April, May or June kind of thing and be like, okay, if you're always looking at, okay, trials are done around that three month mark or four month mark. Okay. Now is, is when we're going to work on all that scheduling. So you're not kind of like, oh my God, this person's wedding is in a month and we never did the trial or whatever. And you're kind of like, okay, what can I focus on right now? That's still, you know, bringing in some income and stuff like that and helping to manage those ups and downs and and all that kind of stuff. Thanks again so much for listening to today's interview with Carly. It was so awesome having her on the show. Also, if you want to just send me a quick DM on Instagram or share today's episode to your Instagram stories and tag me, um, let me know where you're tuning in from. I would love to know that as well. So thank you so much. And I will see you back next week.